Stan Hart Hartzler um, joins us. He's a veteran teacher of 38 years. Mary Bowen is also here. She's currently an elementary school teacher. Um, and Pat is here because he's working uh, with me on something for the American Dream Labs. And we also have a state senator who's going to be joining us in a second who's standing up uh, on this. But I want to spend just a couple of minutes with the two of you guys. Um, you're currently teaching. Yes. And you're speaking out even though you signed a really huge... Um, you know, non-disclosure form. Right. Um, why did you choose to do that, and and how's how's that working out for you? Well, first of all, as a teacher, of course, I'm I believe that I'm an advocate for children primarily, and the thing of it is, is I'm a patriot. So the way I look at schools, I see them as a three-legged stool. And before C-Scope came along, uh, parents would be able to preview curricular materials before they were purchased. They'd be available to look at. Uh, parents would have a say. Teachers would have a say. And when C-Scope came on board in our schools, I realized that two of the legs of the stools were just eliminated. And what, what Cisco basically does is it sets up a system where uh, all of the control and the power in the schools is in one place, and that's with the school leadership. You're, you teach fifth grade, all yes. subjects. Yes. What's the craziest thing that you, when, I mean, when you started looking at it, you were like, what, what made you go, I, I, was well, there one thing? Well, it's, it was very mediocre instruction, for starters. The teachers come into classrooms with dynamic lessons and, and certainly a high ethical standard for providing true information. And C-Scope was riddled with errors. Tests were invalid. And so there was just a mediocrity of instruction. And I'm passionate about students, and I want to provide really wonderful instruction. But anyway, C-Scope comes with a lot of coercion. So along with implementing it, um, there are chronic walkthroughs in the classroom where people troop in while the students are learning and while you're teaching with clipboards, numerous people checking off to see if you're saying the exact same lesson on the exact same day in the exact same way as oh the other teachers up and down the halls. There's tremendous coercion. It's a very oppressive Is, environment. Uh, do the teachers talk about this? Let me bring this in. Do you, do you talk amongst yourself? Because you were written up how many times? I, I, I'm just guessing maybe 10 or 12 Okay, because you just didn't, you refused to teach it. Uh, teach it's, you it no, I, I, I really kind of did my best, <laughs> but at the same time I had to be uh, aware of my students' weaknesses sure. and needs and so on, and so I would try to meet those needs at the same time that I was trying to please my principal. You know, uh, did the teachers talk about this amongst themselves? Like, what is this going on? Well, absolutely, yes, they do. But we have seen teachers who have been fired or have have uh, been eliminated because they've been willing to go before school boards and speak out. So, uh, uh, is, would you say the majority, the fifty-fifty, or the minority are saying this is nuts? The majority of teachers feel that Cisco provides instruction that's very mediocre. What do you say when some a parent comes to you and says, "Hey, I, I want to know what you're teaching. My my son or daughter came home and they said you're teaching about socialism and communism is great. What what are you, what are you teaching? Show me what you're teaching. What do you say?" In, in my case, uh, of course, it was mathematics. Right. But I violated the gag order right away. Right. I was just about as quickly as I could. You know, I was thinking, all right, do this to me. Martin Luther King went to jail for liberty, and so will I. Mm -hmm. And I showed them why it was that the students were struggling. I explained where it was that, that we should be going with this and so on. Why does this, what, this is not a Texas story. The, go ahead. It's not because it began with a federal initiative. See, C-Scope is part of mining our students for data. The, uh, under the Obama administration, there was what is called the K through 20 initiative to try to garner data, to try to gather data up. So every state was mandated. That's every, spooky. Every state was mandated to put into place a system to gather up this data. Data on what? Well, that's where all the oppressive testing comes in through C-Scope. Glenn, we spend one out of every five instructional days in our classroom testing students. Well, that's all providing numbers, and so the, the child is like on a conveyor belt. They've become a number. Oh, this is so horrible. And our, our, you know, the greatest outrage, you know, I, I had outrage about this from the first bad lesson that I had to present to the students. I went home that first night 
retyped it twice as long but much clearer, worked much better. But my outrage really boiled over when I started with this testing program. Imagine if you can, having to take a spelling test, okay? You practice some, some spelling words. Now, of course, this is fictitious because C-Scope doesn't even have spelling, okay? But you prepare for a spelling test and the teacher's reading words and then the teacher reads a word like sequoia that you have never seen and never heard. Imagine that is one of your requirements on your test. That's the kind of testing that C-Scope has. There are a fair number of questions on every test that the students have not explored. Imagine the students' uh, so just are they, frustration. Are they, are they setting up? I mean, I know they're setting up failure for our nation because uh, the, just what I have seen, you will not be able to navigate in life if you come out of a school district that has taught you this. Amen to that. Amen in math, especially. 75% right. of Texas is is running this and they did it david if i'm not mistaken because there were cost cutting measures or something something well, happened, it's right? a much cheaper way of going after things than others and the educational service centers are promoting as well okay so um, um the people who are doing this are teachers the ones who came up with this curriculum are teachers mm. i would call them educrats ah, not teachers yes. i don't okay. call them educators i call them educrats all right you're gonna say something no um mary um uh, um, and, and both of you, really, w this is going to be moved in uh, stuff like this through o Obama's um, uh, presidency now. In the next 12 to 24 months, this is kind of going nationwide. Quickly, um, tell me what, what should a parent do? What should a parent do? What should a teacher do? Well... You know, I'm a patriot, so I'm, I'm asking parents out there, where are our patriots showing up at their local school? Their schools belong to the local community, and they should be stepping up to, to reclaim their local schools. I'd, I'd like to be kind of specific about this, if I could. I'd say the first thing they do is to get letters to the attorney general and get rid of that special permission that the attorney general gave C-Scope to avoid all the state laws about scrutiny of materials. Okay, that would take care of a great many things. I think we need some emergency legislation to get teachers out from underneath this scripting business okay. uh, and so on. Uh, okay. The textbooks back in the classroom. All right, let me go to, because we're going to come back and we're going to go to a state senator who's working on some of this stuff that you're talking about uh, next.